about me is I started watching Vanderpump only after Scandaval, like a lot of people. So I've slowly learned of characters of past seasons and I'll hear their, you know, the sort of the, the archetype of who they are and then I'll watch it play out. Uh, so yeah, Valley was, I mean, season one, it, it felt like every relationship was holding on by a thread. That's how it felt the whole season. It was very stressful to watch with my wife. <laughs> I mean, that's the great thing about Vanderpump of why it was so successful for all those years. It's because it's like you couldn't script this. Like, you know, you had like a Jax and a Stasi, and then like he cheated. It's like it was so intertwined. He cheated with Kristen and then like Kristen was with you literally couldn't make this up. So to me, it was like how I mean, you couldn't make this up that the valley just starts and Jax was trying to get that green lit for years. It just wasn't happening after he got fired from Vanderpump Rules. It really was Scandival. I mean, they're not going to say this, but the bottom line is it was Scandival that green lit the Valley. They were like, okay, let's get it. And so then you have this first season where you know Jax and Brittany and Kristen, but then right every week it's like, wait, Jesse and Michelle, there's a real life. They're breaking up. And it was just like, again, it's like the timing of all of this. It's real. Like you can't ask for this. Yeah, you know, you 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 you're right. You pick it up in in like the the seventh stage of marriage counseling. It's like you go like, oh my gosh, this is. There's already so much going on that you don't even that's not that's unspoken. That when when you when I hear they're breaking up or getting a divorce, I'm like, there's no no surprises there. And you know, like I think you know, Jack's coming back from therapy or whatever. They all need therapy. It's not an excuse. People go, oh sure, he's got PT. No, of course. I mean, they're all kind of plucked from society because they have this itch to be on these types of shows and not just be on them, but be good. Like when I started watching um, Tom Sandoval, I go, Oh, it makes sense. The sound bites he gives, he has these, he, they're not necessarily funny. Like his sense of humor is very interesting. Cause like I'm a stand up comedian. So I love to analyze this and I see Tom Sandoval and I go, he says funny stuff. He, it's, it's, it's like sort of abrasive as hell because he'll say it about his friends and he'll fight with. And then you got the DJ guy, uh, whatever. James. James Kennedy. He, he'll say like they'll come at each other as if they had six months to prepare whatever they left the last season with. And then they're just like, he, you know, you have a cover band musician, Tom Sandoval. And then you've got a guy, a, a DJ who's, you know, essentially they press a few buttons and they're going at each other. And it's just, it, it really does. You, you see really quickly how it makes, it, it makes it work because the, the here, and here's the problem with the bachelor, just to take it back to that. The bachelor has a new cast every year. So every year you have to redefine who's who you can just start watching Vanderpump or the Valley and you can be like, all right, that person's got that role and you can quickly see how the dynamics work out. So as we watch it parasocially, we're watching like we're friends or acquaintances, like we're watching like we're the extra in the room and you can just, you just know where everyone stands. Do you have like having not watched Vanderpump for years and years and years until Scandival, like, do you have a favorite on the Valley or... I mean, I'm biased because I watched Vanderpump. So for, it's about it, Kristen Doty is like the sun rises and sets and revolves around her as as far as I'm concerned. But just curious. But I think Jesse, too, is like, where has Jesse Lally been the past decade? Like he is made for reality TV. He's he's the hothead, right? Is he the one who just. Yeah. The one who's I, married to Michelle, who was apparently walking down the hill every day and going to Chateau Marmont and having lunch with the same guy every day. And now they're together. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right. You've got the people that are sort of like reality. I hate to say royalty because it's it's like, what are we talking about here? But they've got a name for themselves, the Jaxes. And then and then you just plug in some other people. I guess there's this competition, kind of like you see on like Selling Sunset, a competition where you go, all right, how do I get my sound bite in? So we look at it as audiences going, oh, they're just like this, but it's really about what am I going to say to keep myself relevant and on the show? And that's kind of like the Hunger Games aspect of it. So it's like, yeah, it's no surprise that on the finale episodes of Vanderpump, they're just doing haymakers at each other. And then, you know, the show gets renewed. They just, they knock each other's elbows and they go, good match out there. And if you're really good at this, you can probably disassociate. But as we'll probably talk about someone like Chrishell from Selling Sunset that like spills onto the streets you know so some people can I think some people on reality are better at just leaving it out there being a villain saying what you're saying and then the show does well and then they can leave it alone a, a problem that's happening in Bachelor Nation 
uh, pretty much since the pandemic is every single person that says something problematic is getting canceled. And I'm not saying like something super racist. I'm saying, you know, just a bad take. And I think the show would be better. I think Bachelor would be better as if audiences, we just kind of like backed off and let them be crazy because now what you're seeing on new seasons is no one wants to talk. No one wants to say anything um, controversial or funny because they're all afraid of getting the quote unquote bad edit. Whereas I don't think Bravo gets punished for the bad edit. So I think the cast members are willing to go for it more. Yeah. And I wonder like, are they canceled? Like from what, from bachelor nation and like ABC or like on social. Cause like, I mean, maybe it's to me, like I just go to like, okay, well it's ABC. Like this is Disney. This is the place that fired Roseanne within two seconds, whether you right, agree yeah. with that or not. Like, I just think, I wonder if that's it. I mean, ABC is pretty buttoned up. They are, you're right. They are pretty, but which is hilarious because it's a show about polygamy. You know what I mean? It's like they 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 walk the line on network TV with The Bachelor, where they have the fantasy suite. Everyone knows they're banging, or maybe they're not, but they'll like allude to it and say it in like fairy tale terms. And it's like, how do we how how do we pretend to have any moral high ground over here? It's a smut show, but there isn't much to offer the contestants after they've been on the show. There's Bachelor in Paradise, which was postponed in 2024 it's coming back in 2025 but what they would do is they would dangle if you played ball if you were a good contestant if you did what the producers wanted they would say well you can get on paradise and that's another opportunity for exposure and then once that went away last year there was really nothing to offer anybody but now that it's coming back you can see that little sort of feeding ground where you have the episodes like the men tell all the women tell all those are the episodes where that's their chance to kind of, that's kind of like you know like the like a reunion episode it's their chance to just come together attack each other but what they're really doing is auditioning for the producers to be on paradise so there is a little bit of um there is a little bit of a uh, minor league system to stay in that bachelor world but it is short-lived because if you've been on what there are very few contestants that have been on multiple seasons so you get what you can out of it and you try to spin it into some social media afterwards do you think it's possible, like you mentioned the Valley and everyone comes on and there's sound bites? Like, do you think it's possible to come onto reality TV these days anymore and just be there, be in the moment, not, I mean, which is why, like you look at Michelle from The Bachelor, it's, I mean, Maria, it's like interesting that she's turning it down because so many people thought that she was a walking sound bite her season. Like, I mean, I thought so, right? She had it really down, but was that really authentic? Maybe. And like, I mean, is it possible to just come and be in the moment or is it just, we've, we've lost that. We're too far along in the game. Yeah, I, I, I think so. And the podcast world's oversaturated. So you have to have, you have to have just a real strong niche. You have to come out with a real strong niche, um, you know, adjacent to whatever the reality TV niche is. Like you just don't make it in today's world as a pretty face who has a recap channel. Um, you, you, I mean, I say everything. There's always an 